Let me show you how it is when Arisha come down. Where the rum in the drums, but that can't go sound. Watch them bodies get to grooving. Moving around like in a trance when they dance. Working the Pharaoh's lounge. We salute the ancestors first. Cause that's Yo, you highly got I wish you strength, good health, and a manifestation of wealth. Cause like always, the road is open. Every day is a ritual for growth and the opportunity to build and create. We are the architect of our future as well as the master, the ruler of our destiny. Only thing that can stop us is us looking at ourselves in a lower light. That's why we have to stop having that understanding that we born with two strikes. Stop having that understanding that we are born with a problem or that we don't have what it takes to solve our problems. You know, we have to stop relying or using divine intervention as an excuse or uh, as something that we need to overcome our challenges because when we speak that way when we articulate our problem in that manner we saying that our problems are authorized by a supreme being and it's not you know one of the things that Plato he came out with was a philosophy, his philosophy for minority rule. You know, he he had a um, his play. He came out with a narrative, and he said, "You have people of gold, which was meant to rule. You have people of silver, which is right up under gold, and that would be like the enforcers, the police, the generals, and you have." people of brass and iron which is meant to serve and you say we can control these people through education through uh, limited education the people with brass and iron by making them feel is that this position is ordained uh, this position is in divine accordance so they won't believe that they can solve their own problems. And then we can educate these people in gold by building them up with a daily dosage of high self-esteem and educating them in a way of rulers so they will always rule. So, you have a people of gold, a people in silver, and a people of brass and iron. And if you translate that into daytime, because you see that a lot of times when we look at these Western nations, they build off that Greek philosophy of Plato and Aristotle of that minority rule. And this minority rule was meant to get free labor from the masses, but also from those people, most particularly of brass and iron. So you have a people who they single out as different, of not yet human, begging to sit at the table of humanity. And when we look at it today, you will see that, you know, when it comes to us being African American people, and just Africans around the globe. You know, they tend to, and we tend to place ourselves as well in this brass and iron column. You know, no one, when we think about it, would say that, oh, I feel like someone is supreme. I feel like I'm inferior. You know, we in 2020, you never have... You'll never have anyone basically say that right now. But what you will hear people say is that they feel like that, oh, 
they're in no position to change their problems. Or you will hear that um, the problem is just too big for them to digest. Or only a divine intelligence can deal with this problem. So basically, a lot of times you'll see people formulating, articulating their problem through conspiracy theories in a manner in which they can't touch. So that's basically saying in today's term that you are of an inferior class, you know, because you're not going to just straight out say it. So we say it in different mannerisms now. And, and a lot of times, you no, know, we're not going to say that we are brass and iron of people of gold. So now what you hear, you hear people say that, you may hear on the news, for instance, that they say, oh, a black suspect robbed the store. Uh, a black man got killed in custody. So you're not hearing the identity. Uh, you're not hearing the ethnic makeup of the other people, but they were focused in on black. People of African descent call them black. So they basically saying that these people are of brass and iron, or these people are lower class. And most times, if you listen to the media, or when you listen sometimes to us as African people talk, and we use the word, quote unquote, black, we say it in a reference to brass and iron because we speak in it in a way that is less than, you know, oh, I'm black and I'm proud, you know, or, um, you know, it, it could, it could be anything just for the sense that, you know, like we say, man, I was born with two strikes, you know, um, yeah, I already against the eight ball. You know, I already have obstacles to go against for me being who I am. So that is a way to claim that you are, that we are inferior. And how this go about is through the education system. You know, through the everyday knowledge that we see daily through the news, through social media, you know, just by us hearing that, oh, this is the first black person to do this. Uh, this is the first black person, you know, to do that. Which is, why are you singing people of African descent out as the first, which is, in most cases, wrong, but better yet, is you trying to say that, you know, people of brass and iron or second class citizenry uh, doing something that's miraculous, uh, doing something that they're not perceived to to do, that makes them, you know, stand out. You know, so we really have to understand our vocabulary, how we express who we are. You know, that's why with me, I always say that. You no know, colorism is legal racism and it promote a caste system, you know. So when they call you black or when they tell you black, they basically saying that, okay, you are brass and iron, you are second class citizenry because they're not calling out where you come from. They're not calling out your ethnicity. Therefore, they can rob you of your geographical inheritance of Africa because... We know that's where a lot of resources they want, as well as your intellectual inheritance for you know, that knowledge, you know, that knowledge of, you know, Kemet, that pre-dynastic knowledge of the Nile Valley that had many inventions and that can more feed your pride and help with your self-esteem. So they would label you in a position that you are no one, you didn't come from no one, you didn't have no history. The only history you have is the one that we gave you 
when we came to the continent. Another way, the second way, when Plato spoke, he spoke that the way that you can control the people is through the, mona, the monotheistic philosophy, the philosophy and the belief of one God. Because with this belief in one God, now you have this supreme ideal form, meaning that this one articulate subject, uh, this God, uh, supreme being that we can define, and you have everything else that's coming from that being. So, Anything that against this being, you are wrong. So you are punishable. So that's why, you know, anytime you have any religion that, you know, uh, any spiritual system that, you know, believe in just that one deity, a lot of times you have, you know, infidels, you have heathens, you know, you have those people that is non-believers and these non-believers is looked down upon because now you know that this is the ultimate truth. Prior to coming from a culture, that African culture, you know, during that time of Kemi, and, and particularly before, you know, we always had every people you know, every village, every family had their own ancestral deities and those in their own natural re natural resources which applied them in life that made them who they are and that gave them success. So, but during this time, leading up to, you have a transition into now the sun is better than the air, now the air is better than the water, now the water is better than the fly, the fire. Because when we talk about actually deities, we're talking about elements and we're talking about the creative force which is within nature, you know, because nature reveals all mysteries. But when this mono, monotheistic Theology came into existence. It came to put people in to control because now you know if you in the position that you are, it's because that's the way God wants you to be in it. You know, and and we have to look at the big picture. You know, when we start talking about, you know, monotheism, about one creative force, and then we using it as a tool, you know, to look down on others, then we have to call it out what it is. That is a a power tool to control. So that's why Plato said you make them, you know, believe in this God and you let them think that this God has those people in gold back and not those people in brass and silver. So that's why sometimes you hear people articulate their problems in a way where they need divine intervention. You know, they need some type of divine help because they feel like they don't have what it takes to solve their own problems. And, and with that, what you have is a people that feeling that they are inferior. So in most cases, we start having other problems I started using other problems as an excuse. And that's self-defeating because we take that self-defeating route because we feel like we have no alternatives and we feel like we 
forsake our decision. We forfeit our choices because we feel as though we were meant to follow and that we don't have any power. So when it came to this narrative that Plato came up with, you know, he learned it from Egypt, you know, unfortunately, because up under Egypt at the time, they was up under that pharaonic rule, which was based on that pyramidal, pyramidal power structure, you know, being that the minority rulers of that top and the masses deify them, work for them, and just do as they please, you know, with the masses. And that's what he learned. So, and, you know, so during this time when Plato was there in Egypt, that they had left the um, Osarian way, you know, that way that the Greeks call, you know, the Greeks call them Osiris, but we're talking about Osar. They left the Osarian way and went to the uh, Sutekian way. And Sutek, you know, was the Greeks called him Seth. So they went through the Sutekian way and the Sutekian way was of military might, minority rule, and straight monarchy, you know, straight power. And, but what we learn, you know, because Sutek murdered Osar. You know, we know that Seth had murdered Osiris in that Egyptian, uh, the mythological philosophy. Okay, and because Sutek was the the brother, the two brothers, Uset was the military brother, Osa was the brother based on organization, spreading the truth, and you know cooperation more or less. But what we learned that you know after after uh, Set Sutek dismembered uh, Osa which is Osiris, and spread his parts out. We see that Aset, which is Isis, put the pieces back together, and then she was able to give birth to Horus, and Horus continued to fight against Sutek. But, so it's the understanding that the only thing that can beat this military, uh, this military might of this, this you know, with this military might or this deceit or this minority rule and people that want to control, the only thing that can counter that is organization. So that's why it's important that we must organize because that's the only thing that could counter that fraud. Because basically, you can sum it up simply as that Sutek, Seth, represented manipulation, which is fraud and intellectual violence. And then you had Osiris or Asa, he represent inspiration. Then the two biggest forces, inspiration and manipulation. So, so their whole idea is to manipulate you, to make you feel that you're fighting to sit at the table of humanity or that you don't have what it takes to change your environment or that there's no power in the people. And that's their main goal and that's the main objective. So therefore, by organizing and by not getting caught up in that colorized box, you know, and understanding that we have the power to conjure up the energy to 
respond to all our challenges is the only way because they want to pigeonhole you and want to define you in a way that sums you up to brass and iron and then get you to thinking that this God that they give to you wants you in the position that you're in. And that's it in a nutshell. That's the sum total of things, how it plays out. You know, once you forsake your power, once you forfeit your ability to make decisions and make choices and be calculated and strategic and move in a premeditated manner and then you forsake your will to fight therefore you forsake your will to victory Adabo Ashe Odumare We salute the ancestors first cause that's the way to go if you never seen a warrior priest here you go Shango, Ogun, Babalawo Oshun, Batala, Yemuo. We bite the spirits in the rum, is the nitro.